Hello guys, welcome to another video. This time we are disassembling the bottom of the of my Bialbero donor engine, the 1.6 liter engine, twin cam. And uh, I hope this time it will be a little bit easier than the first top half that was a struggle. Now here on the oil sump, I'm taking care of the bolts. In some places we have just bolts and washers and on other places you have bolts, washers and nuts. Be careful because these um, bolts are 7 millimeter bolts. So that's why they, the, the head is 11 millimeters too. Kind of a warning to make sure not to mess that up. In some places is washers and nuts and bolts, in other places you don't have nuts, only bolts and washers. So but that is not difficult to, to remember. Just remember that they are very difficult to find. my 75 that bolt over there near the oil filter that was really difficult to remove it was stuck I have to do that uh, play with the tightening loosening tightening loosening and eventually I did end up uh, freeing that a bit of a, a bit of a tap on the oil, oil sump and I was hoping for a clear sump because the owner told me that the, the, the salesman said this was a built engine ready for use and as you can see <laughs> it's very far from, the, from it so do never trust anyone make your own evalu evaluation taking out here the oil pump nothing really special about this it's just that small o-ring over there here again you can see that the engine is not ready for use far from it a lot of water mixed with oil and my objective here is to see the wear on the bearings I don't want to reuse the bearings but I want to see the state of the wear because I need at least two con rods that are not bent for my engine. And I think fortunately these four rods are good, at least the wear on the bearings tells me so. So just removing the top nuts of the big ends. A lot of water mixed with oil, but eventually the bearings are are nice okay so the top ones are also good for the age of the engine of course okay I, I have a bit more of a wear on one side more than the other but having four eight con rods to choose from I hope I can have four good ones to use, along with new bearings, of course. Here I'm trying to take out the pistons, and they come out relatively easily. You will see why in a minute. Not very difficult to remove. Was just afraid for the the liners to come out, but <laughs> that will be uh, very easy to do. I'm not that lucky. Just taking out here the the support bearings for the crankshaft again, just to see the state of the bearings.
to know if the crankshaft is good or not to be reused because I don't know if the crankshaft all of my 75 is good or not because of the bent uh, con rods. Just a remnants here of the old Bialbero engines of the 105 series. This one still has the metallic tabs to hold down the nuts. Just a method of take, take that out. Try not to break it. Okay, really nice. And now take out the supports themselves to evaluate the bearings. Okay. I did saw that some of these supports were uh, not all assembled in the same position. I have to t take a look at that. I don't know if it is really like this or if it does not matter at all. Anyway, I don't like that. This one was a bit difficult to remove, but eventually, with a bit of persuasion, here it is. Almost here, almost there. This one is not easy to remove either, but eventually I did it. And as you can see, the two cigar type sealers. And to take out the upper bearing you just push it out like this well apparently this engine i tried to show you here the scratches up and down on the liners and those scratches of uh, the engine st being standing this one has corrosion and the fourth one is not the worst okay it has some things over there but not really the worst so the thing is the you may say, well, why are, are you spending so much time on this engine? And uh, another thing, why did the guy that gave you this engine um, gave it to you? Maybe he already know the condition of the engine, that's why he gave it to you. No, the story is much, com much more complicated than that. Um, the person that gave me this engine gave me with the best of the intentions because um, when he bought his car, this was a spare engine. And the salesman said that this was a perfect prepared running engine, ready for use. And uh, as you can see on the sump and <laughs> on the rest of the engine, that is completely not true. I also discovered the reasons why the car does not have any compression. And it's due to the piston rings are completely stuck, frozen together on three cylinders. And that second one, I think, well, maybe, maybe three of the cylinders are not from this engine and the second one is, or the second one, it, it, it is not, because it has this holes for, the, I think, is oil lubrification. Well, that does not matter right now. What matters is, on the fourth piston, the, the rings are loose, are good, and this will be no reason for this the cylinder not to have any compression. But as you remember, on a half, the valves were completely non, non working for various reasons, and that, that is why the, the engine is uh, it's no good. So, what, what can I do with this engine? On this side, it's really out of shape, but on the bottom side, I believe there is some things that I can use. The bearings were not spun, the wear on the bearings is not that bad. That, that tells me that this crankshaft may be of some use someday. And also tells me the con rods are not bent. So I have here um, four con rods that, can, that I can use for myself. And the, these pistons appear to be, apart from the rings, appear to, appear to be in good condition. So I think I can use something. I think I can. It all depends on the liners. So I have to take out the engine to the to the machinist to take out here this pulley and to do all the measurements 
that they can do with tools that I don't have. I just happen to be here starting to pack things up, pack my tools and everything. And I just remember, maybe I can just do something about these liners to help the guy, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be me, I don't have a press, to help the guy to take out the liners. As you saw on the video of the Alpha 166, um, this similar corrosion or galvanic corrosion happens between two types of materials, two types of metals. Here we have the aluminum all around and here we have the steel. So I have a lot of corrosion, visible corrosion all around and on the studs as well. So I decided to pack this with a lot of engine oil to make it easier because the, the engine is going to be here for around a bunch of weeks or months, I don't know yet. And I hope this uh, act on the corrosion will turn things a little bit uh, easier. I see you next time, guys. Bye.